Hi guys, this is Jeff at Slayers Racing. This video is about 24 KTM 350 XWF. This is the first look. I just got this bike. Uh, all I've done to it so far is change the tires because I'm going to take it out for an initial ride. I'll make a video about that ride as well. And uh, I didn't want to tear up the talk stock tires because uh, I don't use that the, the, the stock Dunlops. I don't care for them in our terrain up here in Colorado. Uh, I'm sure they work great in other places, but not here. So I took those off so I could sell those to somebody who likes them. And um, we've got Bridgestones on here, X31 front and a E50 Extreme Gummy Bridgestone on the rear. All right, so let's just look at this bike real quick and I'll just kind of go over some of the changes from the 23 models. Of course, they didn't have the XWF in 23. It was called uh, uh, XCFW. Same bike though. All right, so they've changed the headlight design some on the 24s. I believe the, maybe the front fender is slightly different. I'm not positive on that. Don't hold, hold me to it on that. Um, everything up in this area looks the same. Although the mount for the headlight and the Speedo Auto is different. And it's got a different switch in there for the headlight. So in the past, they had a switch, you know, on the side out here. Now they've got this switch kind of hidden in here. Push it down. Okay, up on the front end here, uh, I forget what these forks are called. The WP Exact, I believe. Um, this is a dual chamber fork or a twin chamber fork, however you want to say it. Closed chamber. A lot of different names for them. And it's the best uh, off-road fork that KTM's made so far. Does it leave room for improvement? Absolutely. Does any stock fork on any brand of bike leave room for improvement? Yes, big time. Uh, you know, because they're one size fits all. They're designed for, to cover all types of terrain, anywhere from sand, mud, hard pack, rocks, roots, uh, whoops, you name it. So they've got to just pick some middle ground and and... And so therefore the settings don't work well for me, for what I do up here in the rocks. We've got lots of rocks and roots. So I'll be changing that out. Uh, I've got a KTEC set up for that fork that's been popular. I'm going to see how that works. And let's see here. Okay, as far as new changes for the 24, the body work is different. So, excuse me. Got stuff in my way here. Uh, the rear fender side panels and shrouds are all different. They're the same as the 23 XC and SX models. Um, it's got this new handle right here, you know, that you can lift the bike up with. I don't like it. I don't use it. It's to me, it's in the wrong location. It needs to be, you know, farther back so you get better leverage. And uh, it's got just minor pollution stuff on it, that piece right here. All that does is uh, collect the, and send the vapors from the fuel tank to a charcoal canister. Really do, does nothing for performance. It does not degrade or help the performance. You can take that off with no consequences, and they come with a removal kit for that, including a little dongle in the, in the kit that comes with the bike. And let's see here. Okay, so on the back here, they've got a, a new chain guide, which I do not like. And the reason I don't, you know, it looks good. It functions fine until you hit something with it. You bump that with a boulder or a stump or something, and it bends in. So it's a plastic-covered aluminum, and the aluminum on these new ones is really soft. Yeah, I think it's the worst chain guide they've, they've made yet. Uh, and because it's soft, it bends in easily. When it bends in, it pushes on the chain, and then the chain chews up your sprocket. And it takes your nice, pretty black sprocket and just grooves it all up. It looks like hell. How do I know? Happened to me. Okay, this new kickstand are, I like a lot. Works well, gets the job done. I think they've improved the spring mount situation. The gearing on this bike, I believe, is 1448. I'll be changing that. It's got the plugged up muffler in the back here. 
I'll be changing that. So 350 at this elevation. So our store is at 6,000 feet. I typically ride it from 7 to 12,000. And as you go up in elevation, you go down in horsepower because the, the air is thin, so your compression goes down and you lose horsepower and torque. And um, so a bone stock 350, I'll let you know when I ride it, but I'm sure it's going to be a gutless wonder at this elevation. They still have the great Brembo brakes front and rear and the Brembo master cylinder on the clutch that works very well. They still got their bulletproof clutch behind that cover there. You can see it's got a Lambda sensor now on it. That's for the fuel injection uh, that connects into the ECU. But it only makes minor adjustments. Guys think that it should uh, adjust from Death Valley at below zero or below uh, zero elevation or 14,000 feet. I mean, but it does not do that. It only makes minor adjustments to outside to ambient temperature, uh, engine temperature, and air density. So it, don't, don't get too excited about that. I'll be taking that off because I'm going to change this to a, a GET ECU and, and the, all the different brands of ECUs do not require that. They do come with fan kits, which is great, but they don't come with uh, the digital readout to where you can change the setting on them. They come on at 190 degrees, whether you like it or not. They've got this new style cap, which I don't really care for. Um, it works fine. It's just a pain to get on and off. You really need one of our special tools to do it. Otherwise, you're going to be cussing. Uh, the seat's new as well. Uh, the way it fits on is different. and But it's, it's the typical board seat. So I'll, I'll make my butt happy with a seat concepts. Uh, the rear shock, they've made some improvements internally and they've put these external adjusters on them that you can turn with your fingers. But then they've made some dampening adjustments on the inside to the shim stack. I'll be changing that as well. Uh, it does come with a plastic skid plate on it now, but it's pretty cheesy. And I've already seen these things blow up. Uh, guys here locally have bashed them into rocks and just blown them into shreds. So I won't be using that. I know what the bike's going to feel like because I already have two 24 models in my stable here. I've got a 24300 and a 24500. And they all have the same frame as this. So I already know what the bike's going to handle like. My main testing uh, when I go out today to, to see how the stock motor runs is just going to be about per engine performance, not about suspension or uh, anything like that. All right, guys, I think I've about covered it here. Uh, I really like these new chassis on these 24 EXC and XWF models. Uh, it's not super rigid like the XC chassis is. And for 25, KTM is actually going to make the XC and SX chassis, chassis softer. You know, I complained when those came out in 23 and said they were way too stiff. And of course, people had to berate me on that. Uh, you know, all the pundits out there thought that they were cool and just had to bash me. But that's that's fine because KTM... Gave me some redemption here with a new frame. But it's doing exactly what I asked for. Although they didn't talk to me about it. Uh, this bike has some nice looking new triple clamps on it. And some people will say, oh, they cheaped out and didn't put the billet ones on there. They use these cast clamps, these pressure die cast clamps, on the off-road models, not the race models. They use more off-road models because they give a more compliant ride. So it's not cheaping out. That triple clamp probably costs just as much to make as the other one. Um, it just get, it just is, well, gives you a little bit more comfort. They do the same thing with the rims on these. They put a different rim on them that has a little more give to them than the ones that are on the motocross bikes. So then guys like to call that cheaping out. It's definitely not. that They're aiming a... They've got a goal in mind, and, and they're doing what it takes to get there. Okay, guys, I think that's enough about this. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to pump out another video on how this thing runs.
So stay tuned. And please like us on Instagram and Facebook if you would. Or subscribe to us on YouTube. And get out for some throttle therapy. That's all for now.